Hey and welcome back to another Dark Fall tutorial. In today's video we're going to try and do uh, some sort of glitch effect. So let's just change this from the 3D view to the node editor. And then we want to check scene, use nodes and backdrop. Just move this out of the way. And then we can go ahead and delete this stuff we don't need. So delete this render layer. And then we can go shift A, go to input, movie clip. And you can use any movie clip you want. I'm just using this one as an as an example. Let's connect that up. Also add a viewer node. Okay, so the first thing we need to do for this effect to work is expose the red, green and blue uh, channels. So let's go Shift A, go to Converter, and then down here we want to separate RGBA. Plug that in here, and then preview that. And then now we want to combine them. <laughs> so Shift A, go to Converter, and then combine RGBA. And again, add that here. Preview that. And then what we need to do is just combine these channels now. So the green to the green, the blue to the blue. Okay, so literally nothing's changed. Um, if we look at the original and then to this one, the only difference is we've exposed the channels. Um, you don't need to worry about the alpha since we've got no alpha in this, but if you want to connect them up, that's fine. Or if you select the node and hit Control G, we can actually hide the unused values. So it's a tip for you there. So if you want to do that, that's up to you. But now we've got this, we can uh, play around with these channels. And we want to add, add like a fringe in effect. So I'm going to go Shift A, down to Distort, and then Translate. Add this in here. And you're probably thinking, well, why don't you just use a Distort node? So I'll just show you the difference now. Shift A, add in Distort node, and then a Lens Distortion. And you plug that in there, and then just probably increase this value here. And it does the fringing effect for you, but the problem you find is it distorts the images as well. So you see around the edges it's blurry, and yeah, it's not the effect that I want. So instead of that, this is why I've just exposed the channels. Then if we just move this on the X, just keep increasing it more, we see it does that fringing effect. So that looks pretty good. So if I just show you the difference between them, so if I switch, this is with the distortion, lens distortion. It distorts the image too much for my liking, um, but if you want to use that, just use the lens distortion. <laughs> but yeah, so I just delete that one and I'll stick with this one. What you can do as well is Shift D and then put this on the green channel, but you want to make sure you change the values to something completely different. So I'll just reset these and then move this around. Sure, it does. Just adds another dimension, another bit of color to it as well. So it's up to you how far you take this. Um, but I think from standard, just one of them works good. So I'm just going to delete this one. But it's up to you if you want to use it or not. And again, you can use different nodes as well to get different effects. So it's entirely up to you what you use. If you use a lens distortion on, say, the red channel, then it can look pretty good. Okay, so let's shift A, add in a mix node. And we just want to add a bit of uh, distortion. So plug that in as well, and then we want to shift A, go to input, I'm going to add in an image that I made, it's very very basic, it looks pretty much like um, a barcode, but if you want to download this I'll throw a link in the description, but you can make one yourself, maybe make it look a lot better, but yeah I'm going to use this as the factor, so I'll use this image into the factor, and then if we shift A, go down to distort, Add in a translate or a transform, it doesn't really make a difference unless you want to scale it as well. And then we just want to move it on the X. So the more you move this, yeah, it breaks it up, looks kind of more glitchy, looks kind of good. That's kind of the effect we go for. So again, make sure you play around with it and get as much uh, distortion as you want or as you need. You can also shift D duplicate this. And what we can do is say, for example, around the eye area is a bit too uh, messed up. You can also scale it and move it around. So it gives you more glitches or less glitchy effect. I don't know. <laughs> it's entirely up to you. So let's just set the end frame now. Somewhere around frame 100. So again, you can add some more effects and some more colors to it as well. I'm going to shift D, duplicate this. I'm just going to add in another image, just delete this one. 
It's the same thing we just did with them lines. And I'm going to transform it and rotate it around. So this is adding more detail or more distortion, if you like, to the image. And you don't have to do this. So just like before, we've mixed them two. Use this as the factor. And then we also want to add a dis another distortion node. Transform or translate either one. Plug that in there. And then if we move this on the Y now, we see around, especially around the mouth area, you can see it's sort of distorting even more. So that's just adding more distortion if you want. Um, it's entirely up to you if you want to do that. Um, again, you don't even have to use this image. You can use different images and different shapes and stuff and styles to sort of give you a different effect. It's pretty cool. And we see we've got this fringing around the edge. So I'm going to have to shift A, add a scale node. And I'm just going to zoom in a little just so we get rid of that fringing around the edge. Just keep it relative. Just increase this to something like 1.1. There we go. So I just add in a translate node here so I can reposition the image. So make sure you set your frame rate. Also set the file type. Set the output where you're going to save this to. Um, and then you can probably go ahead and render it. Um, if you want to animate them lines to give it a bit more motion, you can do that. It's probably what I'm going to do with the final example. So over here on this, or make sure you do it on this translate node, you want to press I to add a keyframe and then move a few frames forward and then change the positioning of it. Press I to add a keyframe, move it again. So I'm pretty sure most of you know how to keyframe values. Um, so yeah, you can do that as well if you want. But hopefully this tutorial helped. Um, if it did, be sure to give it a like. And as always, thanks for watching.